I'm Anil Kumar sharing with you domain and range of functions. In this particular video, we'll discuss functions which involve absolute functions. So we'll have absolute function plus another function. Let us see how domain and range gets modified when we combine two different functions, right? So let me take two examples. Uh, the first one uh, which I want to take is combination with the square function parabola x square divided by absolute x. So I'm keeping this absolute x in the denominator and we'll see what is the domain range of this particular function. Another example which I want to take in this video is to find domain range of uh, let's say 1 over square root of and within square root, I'll put an absolute function. This is a combination of many functions. See, I'll put x square minus 4 here. Okay, so absolute value of that and then square root. Do you see that? So these are the two examples which I'm going to consider in this video. And I hope you find them very interesting. You can at any time pause the video, write down your solution, and then look into my suggestions. Let's begin with the very first one which is f of x equals to x squared divided by absolute x. Absolute x is actually a piecewise function, which is also defined as absolute x equals to positive value of x if x is greater than or equal to 0, and just negative value of x if x is less than 0. So this definition will be used to redefine our function. So since this absolute x itself is a piecewise function, we could redefine the function f of x as equal to a piecewise function, see, where it could be x squared over positive x if x is greater than or equal to 0, or it is equal to x squared over negative x if x is less than 0. Now it is important to note that absolute x is in the denominator. So x is not equal to 0. Perfect. Since x is not equal to 0, when we redefine our function f of x, we should not include this equal to. Right. So I purposely do it so that it is a constant reminder to you that when it is in de de denominator, you should not include equal to sign here while defining your function. Right. I would have straight away written it, but you would have overlooked it, and that's the whole idea. So keep an eye on this. Whenever you do this, remember x equals to 0 is not in the domain of this particular function. Perfect, right? Okay. Now, to find domain and range of this function, let's go one more step, and we'll write the function as equal to x squared divided by x is what? It is x, right? So it is x if x is greater than 0. So I'm not making a mistake now. That was on purpose. This one is minus x if x is less than 0. You get it. So that becomes the, the function, right? So if x is less than 0, it is minus x. Well, if you see this equation, you will note that this function is always positive. Do you see that? It is always positive. So even though it seems to be negative, it is not really negative, right? So that's the tricky part, and that's the reason of my taking up this example. It really creates a lot of confusion. So let me sketch this before I get into domain and range, right? It seems as if range is all real numbers except zero, right? But okay, let's sketch it. Now, if you sketch it, what you really get here is that <clears throat> uh, the right side is okay when x is greater than 0 then you know it is like a straight line and this point is a whole right so that is not in the domain of the function this side is is kind of a straight line right how about the left side will it go like this or like that minus x if x is less than 0 so better is just place some values right so let's place some values so if i write x as let's say minus one so let me write uh, 
x values and f of x values. So if I write here minus 1, so, so minus of minus 1 will be plus 1. Do you see that? I mean to say if I write minus 2, then minus of minus 2 is plus 2. So at minus 1, it will be plus 1. At minus, it will be plus 2. So basically, on this side also, it is going to be kind of like this. So it is an absolute function which is actually not defined at 0. Correct? So that, I hope, helps you to write down domain and range of this function. Correct? So let me squeeze in the domain range for this function now. So we say domain of this function is x belongs to real numbers where we can write this line x is not equal to 0. Is that okay? So that's the domain of this function and range for this function is y belongs to real numbers where y is greater than 0. It is also not equal to 0. So that becomes the domain and range of this particular function. Right. So we took a lot of space uh, from the next question into this one. So I'll kind of squeeze in the solution for this one. Okay. <laughs> so now I hope this part is clear to you, right? So when we combine absolute function with other functions, things really change. X squared divided by absolute X is kind of absolute X where it is not defined at origin, but otherwise it is same. Okay. The next function is g of x equals to 1 over square root of absolute value of x square minus 4. Now here, instead of defining like this, I will use a different approach. We'll actually graph this and from the graph, we'll draw, I mean, our conclusion about the domain and range. Okay, so, so I'm just figuring it out. Uh, let me draw this line here. I think that middle space should be okay. Uh, so this is our coordinate plane. So first, I will start drawing with my inside function, okay? So the inside function here is x squared minus 4. So x squared minus 4 is my inside function, which I am going to draw in this color. So this is a parabola, which will be kind of like this. So drawings are kind of approximate, but they give you a fairly good idea of what we are trying to do. So this function here is x squared minus 4. Okay, so let me write down here. This one is x squared minus 4. Okay, this function. Now, if I do absolute value of this function, then what it becomes? The negative part becomes positive, so it becomes like this. So this function which I am drawing now is the absolute value of x squared minus 4. So this function is absolute value of x squared minus 4. It is always positive as you can see. Is that okay? Okay, so this is the function here itself. Now, we'll draw this in green, the whole thing. Um, so 1 divided by square root of this, correct? So, so let me draw uh, 1 divided by this. Or should I do square root part also? Okay, so let me use another color, do square root part now. Okay, so square root part here is that if I am at this point, square root of 0 is 0, square root of 0 is 0. Is that okay? Now this point here is actually, uh, let me number these. So x square minus 1 means this is minus 2, this is 2, and this point here is a minus 4. Is that okay? So here what we get here is 4. Square root of 4 is 2, so we get a point here. It should have been further like this, but anyway, uh, let's say this is this is 2 for us. Okay. Square root of 0 is 0, square root of 0 is 0, square root of 4 is 2. So in between, we'll have values between 0 and 2, right? Square root function is always increasing, correct? So here, if you go from here to there, the values are kind of decreasing. So from 0, 0 to this, it is going to increase correct, kind of like this. Here, it is increasing in this direction. So, so it looks like this. Is it okay? So that becomes the square root function. And since this value increases, square root function will also increase kind of like this. So that becomes the, the graph for the square root part. Okay. So what I have here is a function which is square root of 
absolute value of x square minus 4. Do you see that? This is what we have. And what are we interested in? 1 over reciprocal of this. Reciprocal of this. So I need a different ink. Okay. So we'll do with this one now. So now I'm sketching g of x, which is reciprocal of this green function. Now reciprocal means at this stage we'll have vertical asymptotes. Do you see that? So we'll have vertical asymptote here because they are zeros. Anything divided by zero will lead to undefined value, which is resulting into a vertical asymptote. Now since these values are increasing, here the graph will be kind of like this. Let me just sketch the graph. We'll now not go into details for this, but I hope you understand and get it. So that is the graph of the function g of x. So I hope that gives you a good idea of sometimes how complicated things could be in functions, right? Now let me write down domain range for g of x. So we are considering domain of g of x, right? So as you can clearly see, we cannot have 0, uh, I mean 1 over 0. So this is not in the domain of the function when you do when you do square root, right? So this is out of the domain. And well, I did not sketch the center part. Let me do that also. So this center part here is, this value is 2, right? So square root of 2 is, is something 1.14. So this center part will be kind of like this. Okay, so, so let's say this is kind of like this. Is that okay? So what you really notice is that this g of x is always positive but greater than 0. But in the domain, will not include minus 2 and plus 2. So let me write down the domain of this function, which is x belongs to real numbers, where x is not equal to plus minus 2, right? Now that you could have got straight from the equation also. You don't really have to do all this. This is just to explain you how to visualize it, which you may need in later half of this course. So denominator cannot be zero. So straight away, you get this domain. And as far as the range of this function g of x is concerned, you can see it is y belongs to real numbers, where y is greater than, right? It is always greater than zero. So that is how you get, get domain and range. Well, finding domain and range was not really difficult in this, since square root functions are always positive, perfect. <laughs> they are always positive, right? And so reciprocal of positive will be positive. We cannot have zero here, so domain is not equal to plus minus two. And since uh, for a very large value, we get one over a very large value as zero, it, this function will never approach, I mean, never be zero. It will only approach, so x-axis is a horizontal asymptote. So range is always greater than zero. I hope that helps. I kind of complicated it here, but I hope some of you will really benefit. In short, the domain is x not belonging to plus minus 2, and range is y is greater than zero. I'm Anil Kumar, and I hope you understand and appreciate it. You can always like my videos, share them with your friends, and feel free to post questions and suggestions. Thank you, and all the best.